Okay, so just an introduction uh, to um, cancelling of beliefs. And uh, uh, just for me, uh, I, my background is just for, for people who have a background of 12 step fellowships and just general spiritual practice. For me, uh, cancelling of beliefs is the uh, next level up. So generally with uh, prayer in, in churches or 12-step groups, to some extent The Course in Miracles has what I call some of the lessons are what I call dualistic prayers and some of them are more non-dual prayers. Mm -hmm. So what, what do I mean by that? A lot of um, the first stages of spirituality, when people first get in contact, they're usually uh, the referencing of prayers is, is what I call dualistic. What does that mean? It means that there is the belief that the individual is separate from God. So it's like there's a me, like uh, I'm Sabir and I'm going to pray to God, help me, dear God, help me to forgive Aunt Nelly. You know, so that's what I call dualistic. The, the idea, which is a big, which is a huge shift up from atheism. Yeah. which is like I'm the center of the universe and there is no God so just to even get to the to the capacity that there could be some power that's not me is already a massive step up from atheism uh, but that's a lot of most spirituality if you want to get to the more, more advanced levels then you want to get to the levels of enlightenment or what's called non-duality or letting go of the idea that there is any separation uh, between God and self so then, if you like, the prayers or the uh, statements are then to cancel or to let go or to refute any idea uh, of uh, validating that the ego is real. So that you totally delete it. So that all that's left is the, is the higher self or the higher power or God consciousness mm -hmm. or the oneness, mm -hmm. you see. So, right, so we're not going to... Even though from atheism, just having dualistic prayer, me praying to God is a huge step up. To get to the really, to really access the power, we want to be doing things which totally deletes the ego with what we're doing. So, <clears throat> so uh, in one of my spiritual teachers, as most of you know, is Dr. David R. Hawkins. After I had my near-death spiritual experience, and I was given a DVD of his, and I, knew, I had a spiritual experience, I knew he was going to be a teacher. And he had let go of 23 physical illnesses just by doing the, these very powerful, uh, if you like, prayers or, or affirmations. Uh, and I, I, I met him, and I did them, and I let go of three major illnesses, gout, asthma, and kidney failure. And this is stuff, you know, even in 12-step groups, 12-step groups are really good at letting go of addictions. But generally speaking, they tend not to have uh, enough truth to let go of really heavy stuff like physical illnesses. So you wouldn't like go, you know, wouldn't really go to a 12-step group for cancer uh, and get everyone sort of cured. You know, you'd probably go one for one for alcoholism or donut addiction, and then they they do the 12 steps and they'd stop eating the donuts or the alcohol, or whatever. So there, there's a lot more power. Okay, so. Um, the, uh, just very quickly, the, the, um, the thing would be, I cancel my, let's say that I cancel my belief in, in anything that the ego is holding in mind, you see. So whatever it is, whatever limiting belief, because the beliefs are what create, are, are, the, are the house or the structure of the ego that creates this sense of separation. So in order for you to access the full power of the universe, the full power of God. You, you, want, you want to delete all the, all the belief systems that the ego is holding on to, which are based on, if you're looking at the Course of Miracles, fear and separation. The more you identify to limiting beliefs and the more you're in addiction, you build up the reservoir of repressed feelings, you know, which, 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 which um, constitute the inflated ego. So the, you know, so the more there are limiting beliefs and the more addiction, then the ego gets more inflated and there's a block to that infinite power, being one with the flow, being one with the source of the universe, you see, so you can block it. So you, you can, ca you know, enlightenment stuff for cancelling beliefs is to cancel everything. And the Course in Miracles is really good in that because the first 
one of the very first lessons, even though it's not counting beliefs, is all my thoughts are meaningless. Meaning that you don't need your ego at all. The universe, if you just delete your ego, the universe will do a far better job uh, uh, than just having an ego. And just by having any belief systems within the ego which are uh, special, important, or, uh, or have meaning, then they, they, they create an identified sense of separation. Okay, so actually, okay, so, so someone was, was, was saying to me they find doing the counseling and beliefs unnatural because they think it's controlling. Well, to have an ego is control, you know? The ego is, is the thing that is, in, is a thing that thinks it's separate from God and wants to control everything, you know? Yeah. And anything that deletes the ego is not controlling, it's actually deleting that thing that thinks it has the omniscience to be take God's place and not allow things to flow and channel through. So if, if, you're, if you pray to God to delete your ego, St. Francis said, I mean, I think it's probably best to use St. Francis, probably more believable than if I say it, but, <laughs> but St. Francis says it's in dying that one is born to eternal life. So d death of what? And St. Francis says that what you're looking for is where you're looking from. So those two things are, uh, are the, the, w w St. Francis is a mystic, or uh, you could say an enlightened, enlightened saint. So what he's saying is that in the death of the ego, this thing that thinks it's in control, that thinks it knows what to do in the future, or reminisces about the past, or is going to orchestrate this moment now, it's in the death of that, that... Uh, it's in the death of that that uh, hi, 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 welcome. Have, have a seat. Well, welcome. Uh, so it's in the um, in the death of that ego that thinks it's in control that you know the source or God can then flow through. So so to to say something like I cancel my belief in um, whatever it is, you know, I cancel my belief um, that, I cancel my belief in poverty, I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind, or I cancel my belief in, con in the need to control the future, or I cancel my belief in low self-esteem, or I cancel my belief in needing to be important to get approval, you know, I'm an infinite being, those aren't being controlling, those are in fact letting go of the operating software of the ego, um, that is running automatically to try and control the world non-stop. So it's, 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 you know, to have that idea, oh, I don't want to cancel all my beliefs and let all my limiting ideas go because I think that's controlling, that would be an idea, what I'd call an ego defense belief. Mm. You know, now that we're doing spiritual work, I don't want to do this, this is really unnatural. I think actually deleting the whole basis of me trying to control the world is controlling. So this is a really unnatural. Mm. Whereas actually it's like, it's the most threatening thing to the ego's basis of being in control in every moment. So, so it would feel very unnatural for the ego. It would feel very, it would do anything not to do it. Any advanced spiritual work because it's the death of it being in control. So the more uncomfortable, the more fear any spiritual practice brings up, you could say the better it is for you. You know, if something's going to feel like if you do it, you know, mm. you're, go, you, you're going to f face annihilation or terror, <coughs> or you're going to scream and never be the same again, or it seems extremely uncomfortable, that means it's really, really good for you. And if something's, if the ego says this is really easy and I, lo I love doing this and this is easy peasy, it's probably something which the ego knows will have no effect on its dominion of being in control and connecting to a higher power. Because, uh, so, so that would be my thing for that. So, so, and that's the thing. So just to, you know, I think it's, it's important to share experience, you know, like I've let go of three major illnesses. Just by doing like, I cancel my belief in gout. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind or I cancel my belief in asthma, I'm an infinite being. So in my story, it was a lot of physical illnesses. I wanted to do it. You know, it wasn't so much 
poverty or, or, or other things. So it is, okay, so you can, any, any belief, what is a belief? It's just a thought that repeats over and over and over again, a repetitive thought. And of course the miracle says, um, you know, definitely the negative ones veil, you know, the light of God. But even the positive ones are also veiling, on a smaller extent, the light of God. So that's the whole thing of the first lesson in The Course of Miracles, all my thoughts are meaningless. It's not like, don't selectively, because we're now at the vibration of enlightenment, don't selectively even keep your good thoughts. You know, I want to get rid of the thoughts that I feel I'm not good enough. But uh, I want to keep this thought like I'm going, to be the, I'm going to be the most famous person on the planet by next week. You see, I want to keep that one because I think that's a good one, you see. So you can keep those ones if you want to. I mean, it's just if you want to go to the level of the course, you know. So uh, otherwise you can keep your, you know, the ones you think are good. But that would be the ego selecting what it thinks is good and what it thinks it's, it's okay to let go of. All right, so um, I think that answers the question on control. I might be controlling if I do, and I think that's like a, a basic explanation. So, no, no, it's not. I can't, so cancel the belief, and then I say I'm an infinite being. Mm -hmm. Now, that might feel very, very unnatural if you're new to this, I'm an infinite being. But if anyone's meditated, or if anyone's had a spiritual experience, or if anyone's experiences these states of flow for any period of time in their life, when it's almost like life becomes timeless and the stunning beauty of the world sort of reveals itself and there's a, a mist, a mist well, sometimes for me as well, like a, there's a stillness, uh, like a holy silence to life. If you, it's infinite. There's no, there's, what's happening in those moments is there's no, um, there's no identification with that habitual limited ego thinking of the future and the past and its fears and its anxieties has just disappeared and that, that, that holy presence is there, you see. So that's what it means. It's, the Course is basically saying when you're in those infinite states, when you're experiencing no limitation because you're not hooked into the ego, which is all the limiting ideas, and uh, when you experience those limitless states, that's your true nature. And out of that, you know, you're channeling, if you like, the Source. But, you know, so those are those states, you know, uh, sometimes there's, there's been books written then in popular psychology they might call those the flow states or, or, or something like that, or we call them the enlightened states or the mystical states. So, so like I would say, I cancel my belief in kidney failure, it could be whatever it is, social anxiety or fear of uh, socialising or it could be... Um, uh, even I cancel my belief that I'm being controlling to cancel my belief. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I'm in. Because you can cancel the blocks. Also, like, if, if, you're, um, if you're, I mean, another tool which we'll be doing soon is the field of feelings tool, which is a separate tool. But if, if you're having a feeling that you don't want to feel, and you're having a lot of resistance to, like, opening the doorway to, to this feeling, you can, you know, there's another way of doing it. There's a modification to say I cancel my resistance to feeling my feelings, you see. Mm. Like I've been doing, like I, I cancel, I could say I cancel my fear of public speaking, you see. So I don't have to always cancel my, I, you know, I find that works as well. I cancel my fear of speaking in front of groups. Mm. I'm an infinite being subject unto other. What I, or I cancel my belief that the economy is in recession. I'm an infinite being subject to only to what I hold in mind. Or I can, or I cancel my need for people to approve of me, you know, to get people's approval. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. So you can do, or I cancel my fear of feeling, a fe my feelings. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. Or I cancel my belief in uh, social anxiety, or I cancel my belief in procrastination, the need for procrastination, or you can also do like I cancel my desire for protein bars, or I cancel my desire for flapjacks, you see, of an infinite being. Because in the infinite being, it's a state, all enlightened teachers say there's nothing they need or want. Every enlightened teacher says that. Because in those states of absolute presence and infinite power and wholeness, it's true. You know, if someone said to you, like, 
will the donut make you more happy? It's like, it wouldn't. In those states, a donut would not make you more happy, or a flapjack, you know. Or if I gave you a million pounds, or if I gave you this certificate, or if I could hook you up on a date with X, you, you, they, they would have no attraction, because you're already at the highest level of happiness. Yeah.